Wealthfront's been at it again, making changes. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my 5.5 year review of using Wealthfront as my primary investment tool. If you are looking for all the past videos that I've done, up in the right-hand corner there, you should see a link to take you to my playlist for Wealthfront. Uh, I have been given the moniker of longest-running Wealthfront YouTuber, apparently, uh, by some fellow YouTubers, uh, which we'll talk about a little later, showing the evolution and changes to the platform itself. Now, one of the biggest things that they changed last time I did a video was all these things that you could do with your cash accounts now. And I'll do a separate link up in the right-hand corner for that video, as it didn't quite get as much views as I thought it would, but that's probably because of the thumbnail I chose. So if you're interested in an in-depth look at all the cash account features, check that video out over there. For starters, we're gonna talk about this, the automate your savings. This is something that they teased uh, six months ago when I did my last video, and now they're really implementing it. And I've been staring at this since this button's been here. So let's actually take a look at see how this works. So what will happen is your paycheck gets sent to your Wealthfront cash account, and then it will get divvied out into predetermined classifications based on what you tell it. You also have time that if it's going to make this change to tell it, no, don't do that. So if we select getting started, you can select, choose where to save, and then you have your accounts, your IRA, your investment account, your personal cash account. Notice that it is not showing my what I use for my business cash account. Then you can create categories. So what we're going to say is personal cash account. And then we are going to say, add savings, add vacation, add emergency, and then you can create your own if you wanted to. We're going to select that icon. It's default is home, you can see child, home, or you can edit and we can say, we'll call that vacation home because I'm living large. Create and it will add that. Next, we would hit continue. Now we can pretty much determine what we want to do. So we're going to hit next. So when money is deposited in my Wealthfront business account, and that is why it showed my personal account, because the money goes into this account because I have that one set up for the checking services. All right, that that makes sense. So it will say, how much do you want to keep in this? So I will set a target balance of this much because I'm actually not going to use this service. We'll say that much. And we'll say daily, start monitoring on that. And then you would set targets for saving. And you can shift these around to you know things that take precedent. And you would set a target, add a monthly target, add target balance, remove from automated account, and then you would select update. And what this will do is allow you to set up individual pools and money flow. And I kind of like the way that Wealthfront is doing this. However, some of the changes that they made with their cash account, the funnel here, not as interesting or useful for me. So what we're going to do is we are going to select that to go away. But you'll notice that automated savings monitoring is off. If we click on that, it will bring us back to what we were doing before, which is skipping the manual transfers. We would say get started, and it would take us through the setup process again. You will notice now that I have these extra accounts within my business cash account. This would be one way that you could move money between cash accounts because right now you can't manually do that. You would have to do this. So you can select goals, which hasn't changed, or balance, which is kind of what we were looking at before. Now, the important part is if you don't actually want these categories, let's say you set them up, you weren't happy, or you add an extra one that you just don't want to have anymore. Well, you can come into your account that has them. And then up here at the top, you will see categories. I have four, and then the stated balance of my what I'm calling my business cash account. I select view then, you click into your cash account, you will see at the top categories, in this case I have four, and then the balance of my cash account. I then select view, and here are our categories. Let's say we want to get rid of the vacation category. You can either transfer right away to this particular category, 
Or we can come up to settings and say, delete category, delete vacations. And then on our main page here, you'll notice that vacations are gone. So it's an interesting thing to set up. And I can see how pooling your money into individual buckets could be helpful. But for my particular workflow, not so much, at least at this time, based on some of the changes that have happened to the cash account. But let's talk about the changes that have been made to the investment side of the Wealthfront house, because that's where a lot of exciting things are happening. And here we can see my IRA account. They've made some changes to the side panel here where you can you know, change your tax year for the deposit, see all your transactions, which just brings you elsewhere, manage your bank accounts, and then you can kind of see the workflow of things here. And I will quickly talk about the returns because, well, that's partially what you want to know. Uh, my IRA, the last time I did my money-weighted return check, I was at 82.21%. You can see now I'm at 93.57, so that's gone up nicely. If I change this to my time-weighted, originally, last time I did this, time-weighted was at 77.78, now at 87.3. So that, too, has gone up. The major change that Wealthfront has made is giving end users the ability to deviate away from using their predetermined plans based on your risk tolerance score. And what do I mean by that? Coming down here, we now have an item called Edit Portfolio. And what this will allow you to do is if you wanted to, you can just change your percentages for the risk score that you have. In this case, I'm going to say, show me my recommendation. And I'm just going to show you a little bit there. Before I actually changed things, it would tell you my risk score. Since I've changed it, it won't tell you my risk score anymore because this is deviated away. But you can now change percentages of items that you already have in your account, or you can add new investments. And let me show you what that looks like now with the original changes that I made to this account as well as my investment account. Here's an example of changing or editing your profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim 1% from each of these categories and add an extra category at 4%. So we're going to select Edit Profile. And then what we're going to do is select Add Investment. And then here you can see all the different ones that you can do. So what we're going to do is we are going to select Sector and then come down and find the technology sector. And then it gives you information about it. And its risk is very high, which is why I'm only going to allocate 4% of my portfolio to it. I'm going to select Add to Portfolio. And then here we go. It says, hey, you've got this. We're going to select 4%. And then thankfully, we can just minimize this by going 34, 14, and then you'll notice it says 100%. I'm going to leave the dividend appreciation ETF because I kind of like that. So just by skimming 1% off of the others, we will now have a 4% stake in XLK technology sector, which does tax loss harvest with a Vanguard that is similar. And we are going to select continue. And here we can say, see that Wealthfront is going to do its best to balance into the new position over time to minimize taxes. However, it is indicating that there may be tax consequences because we are going to be lowering our other funds in order to start with this new sector. Trades won't be executed immediately, which is greatly appreciated, and might miss the current trading session depending on what you're doing. And then they suggest keeping your target allocation for a few months to get the best of tax loss harvesting. I'm doing this out of sequence, so in the video it looks all the same, but right now I'm doing this ahead of time because I will have a auto fund happening, and I'm hoping that a lot of that will just go into the new sector and the other ones will just be skipped for a month or two. And I'm going to select Update the Portfolio, that on this page it doesn't look like anything has changed yet, but if we come back to Edit, we can see that it does have a position in 4%. Continue one more time. All right, and when we select it, update, it will change. So I'm assuming that next time it gets cash, it will 
change things along the way. And that was for our investment account. Coming over to my IRA, I kind of like the mix that it has already, so I don't want to add anything, but we can select add investment or we can select see recommendations. So we can see the recommendation based on what we have. We can change our risk score. And this is partially why I kind of like what I have. You notice that it kind of shrinks the assets down and then puts a lot into the emerging markets bonds. Uh, I don't necessarily want to do that. Even if I lowered this to about what I have originally, it, uh, you know, notice things are kind of similar. So what we're going to do in this case is I am going to skim 2% from my emerging markets bonds and put those into emerging markets ETF. So that'll bring this up to 15%. And then I will skim a little from my investment grade corporate bonds to put into my Vanguard total stock market. So what we will do first is come up to this ETF and we will change this to a 15. And you see it's showing 102% over, so we can't really do anything with 102%, which is fine. And then we will come down here and shave off. We'll leave that at 6%. Now you see it's 100% there. And then we will come up to our 15% here, and we will lower this to 13% and add that extra 2% up here. I'm keeping the assets, but I'm changing the allocation percent. So we're going to hit continue. And then with this one, we'll typically rebalance your portfolio within one trading day. In the meantime, feel free to deposit or withdraw. Trades won't execute immediately. You notice that because this is within a Roth IRA, taxable events that I have to worry about. So this will actually happen much sooner. Currently, it is June 5th. And we will say update portfolio. Here we can see our new targets have been set. So there you saw the changes that I made to both of my accounts. I popped over to my investment account now just to talk about the returns that we're getting. And again, this one is based on a risk score of 7.5 with an alteration that you saw me make. My time-weighted return last time was 52.40%. You can see it's at 59.14, so that's gone up. Change this, money-weighted. Last time was 71.07. .07. Currently, it is at 78.73, so that's gone up too. Uh, again, the side panel here, we can change our deposit year. We can change our investing settings, which doing this will allow us to toggle off and on the tax loss harvesting. You can manage your bank accounts. You can now also view your cost basis for your investments. Now, with the change that I made, you'll remember that I added the tech sector. But you don't see the tech sector here. That's because the tech sector is wrapped up here in my US stock. So if I click on this, now you can see XLK kind of wrapped up in the US stocks. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I get that these are mostly US funds, but I kind of was expecting to see this outside in this area here. So not sure how I feel about that. One of the other things that I'm not sure how I feel about when we come down to the ad investments, and when we're going through a lot of these, whether it's the sectors or the U.S. stuff, you'll notice that uh, they do seem to be moving away from the Vanguard stuff, especially in this area. They, they are going more towards the SPDR funds for these new sectors and areas that you can add to your account. I'm not sure how I feel about that right now. We will see how the technology fund does. And I'll make a recommendation or comment in another six months for the six-year version of this. And there are still a lot of features within the investment account, especially, that I don't have access to because of the amount of money that I have in there, which isn't a lot. So if you're looking to find out about what this can do with six figures in, again, one of the other YouTubers out there right down here, Millennials Lead the Way. As you can see from this video still right here, the last time he did a video for Q1 2021, he's got six figures in this account. And I would love, love for him to do a follow-up on what he thinks of the new investment features. Because I do know he was shying away from use of the cash account. And I totally understand that. But he is definitely into the investment account. So I would love to see what he thinks of these new changes that they've made. Again, when I come into U.S. stock index right here, because of the amount I have, they're using the 
U.S. direct index indexing is replacing VIT for portfolios under 100,000. What this means is if I click on this, you get extra exclusive stuff when your account balance reaches over 100,000. So millennials lead the way. We're looking forward to that next video of yours. One of the other changes that was made to your cash account slash investing account is if you've got money in a cash account, you can now use that to invest in your IRA or your general investment account faster than if you were from your brick and mortar or outside account. And what do I mean by that? Well, normally you're looking at a two to three day turnaround from take money from my brick and mortar, put it in here, and then invest it. If you've got a cash account of any type, your investing takes five minutes. So when the market's red, like it is today and was yesterday, you can take money right from here and invest it in five minutes. It is great. And it's also why I'm still keeping my personal cash account right here. So you see, I actually invested an extra $100 yesterday. And it says right now that there's $1,000 because it's calculating the external money that I brought. But right here, it is saying that the balance available right now is $100 less because it hasn't, it hasn't finished calculating that. So if you want, have a cash account with a small contingency of money that will allow you to take advantage of fluctuations in the market. I am not condoning or saying that you should try and time the market. But for me, if I see a red day, I'm going to try and jump in there and see if I can get some extras. Now, I did kind of gloss over one of the changes that was made to the cash account. And that's this, the current percent back that you get for having money with welfare. It has been steadily dropping. All banks have steadily been dropping this. But one of the primary reasons that I opened up these accounts with Wealthfront was that they had a higher percent than your brick and mortars. This is actually lower than you can get with other online only banks. And I am being real with you. I'm telling you that there are other banks out there that will give you a better percentage. Granted, you don't have the tools that you get with Wealthfront and you can't do those options like, you know, five minute trade into your investment account, the moving money around if you wanted to. But the, this 10.10% APY for my money here makes it harder to recommend using the cash account for everything, especially when you have something like Marcus, which currently, as of date of recording, is offering 0.5%. Yes, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's about par what you get for other online only banks. And here's the uh, shilling for the day. I will have a link in my description area below for Marcus, which will, if you select it, get you and myself 0.2% extra for three months. So right now that would get you up to 0.70% cash back, which is still more than you get for the Wealthfront account. I'm not saying that the Wealthfront cash account isn't good, but if you're primarily using it just for a place to hold your money and gain interest, probably want to look elsewhere like I did, which is why I moved a lot of money into Marcus. That does not mean that Wealthfront itself is a bad tool. As you saw with the changes that they made to the investing account, they are definitely putting more tools at your disposal to customize this how you'd like. And I will admit, when I started off, yes, I just wanted to use their risk-based score layout. But as I've progressed through my financial journeys, I've wanted a little more control of that. And I'm happy that they let me do that now. So second shill of the video, if you are interested in using Wealthfront for yourself, I will have a link in the description area below. If you are joining Wealthfront for the investing feature, this link will get you $5,000 of assets managed fee-free. If you're doing personal cash account, Still use the link because what that will do is if you decide in the future to move up to the investment account, that's $5,000 fee-free management just waiting for you when you're ready for it. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. 
Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.